Okay, welcome everybody. Tonight we're going to be we're going to be talking about Barfu, and then we'll begin our discussion on the brachas, the birchos creation. It's a lot of them, and very confusing what exactly the point of the birchos creation is. Um, so we'll have a lot to discuss there, but we're not going to get too far into that today. We're gonna to, we're gonna get in the beginning, and we're gonna also discuss Barfu because Barfu also um, needs needs some explanation. The source for Barhu, we'll start with there, is the Gemara and Brachos, Pei Zayin, where Rabbi Kiva and Rabbi Shmuel, they both said Barhu. They have a little, they both said a different version of Barhu, and I think we take Rabbi Shmuel's version of the Barhu, Pei Barh Shem and Mivorach. Um, Barhu said only with the minion, just going to be rapid fire, some some things about Barhu. Barhu said only with the minion. The Zohar says that the Neshama doesn't return to the body until one says Barhu. So I think some people are very careful to say barhu if they miss barhu, and some uh, some of the nosos have an extra barhu at the end. Um, one needs to stand when saying barhu because it's a davar shabikusha. Anything that's davar shabikusha, you have to stand for. Uh, there's a minog that we have to bow. So this is a minog to bow when we say barhu, and to stand up straight when we get to Hashem's name, just like we do when saying shmon asrei. But there's also a hint. There's a hint to this in Divrei Hayyamim. So I looked up the Pasuk, and the Pasuk says, by Yomer David the Chol Akal, David said to the congregation, Baruchu na es Hashem Elokechem. So obviously this is where the, the Baruchu that we say comes in. By Rachu Chol Akal, by Hashem Elokechem, by Hashem So all the Kal, they, they bless to Hashem, their God. By Yitzu, by Yishtachavu, by Hashem, by Melech. And then it says they bowed to, to Hashem. So... That's where, that's the source. That's part of the idea of where, where we know to bow for Barhu. But it's really, it's really a minog, and the minog's very strong. So we bow when we say Barhu. Now, some people have a minog to say this, this mini paragraph that starts by saying, Yisbarachi, Shabachi, sometimes you'll see it in some of the sitters. So that, some, people have, some people have that minog, um, and as part of the minog, the Chazen would, the Chazen would do this, he would chant this anigin, while the congregation said this, he would sort of like, I guess, I imagine it's the, the like the Yom Kippur Barfu, the big one on uh, in the night, Yom Kippur night or Rosh Hashanah. Um, and, and as you're saying this, the, 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 the congregation would say this little paragraph. But when when the Chazim is saying the words, they have to be very careful not to um, not to say this paragraph anymore. And so probably this minute I lost practice because people started stopped want to do this chant and now since we just say Barfu you, 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 and the Chazim just say Barfu doesn't, doesn't, he doesn't do a chant unless it's on Yom Kippur we don't, we don't say this paragraph and then just so what, what, it, what are we really doing by saying Barfu so the explanation given by Rav Schwab is that the Shliach Sibor he's saying to the entire Sibor he's, he's announcing to them Barfu is Hashem and Barach he's sort of saying to them that you know, I'm the Shlech Sibor, I'm, the le- I'm technically the, the leader right now of the entire Sibor, but it's not, it's not a private, it's not me and God, it's, um, it's, it's all of us. The, the Shlech Sibor is invite, inviting the entire Sibor to join him in making a, making a communal sanctification of Hashem's name. Um, and so the, the reason why that's important is because saying something with a minion indicates that the that blessing of Hashem that when we each bless Hashem on an individual level, it's going to be it's going to be elevated to a higher level. You know, the entire Sibor combines all their individual brachos, and that's that's what we're doing when we're having this back and forth from the Chazim to the Sibor. Right? The, it's almost also like that the Sibor is giving 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 the Chazim permission to be the one to lead them, but it's all all working together. Right? We're each having our individual tefillahs combined to combined together to make um. To make a tibor, and so this is done by the the tibor responding right after after the chazan says baruch was Hashem mevorach, the tibor responds back baruch Hashem mevorach um, And just another another point that since this is done by the entire tibor in response, so the chazan is also technically part of the tibor, and so he should join in their response of baruch Hashem mevorach yolam vayed. And that's that's the halacha as written by the Shulchan Aruch, the Min Zayin of Archaim, and the Mishnah Brewer says there says there as well. Um, 
there is there is some people have the practice to where the Chazan says bar he repeats Baruch Hashem Mevorach after sorry Baruch Hashem Mevorach Olam Ba'ed after the Tibur. Rishav, I I read he said he was very anti that practice. He said that the, the Chazan is part of the Tibur. He should say it along with the Tibur together. Some people to say say the Shalchi Rishav say it very quietly. Um, that's I guess he would be okay with that practice, but he should he should be saying it at the same time. Um, that's what Rishav. That's how Rishav understands it. Uh, there also this would apply this would apply also to one who say who says it's bracha when he gets called up to the Torah. It's it's the same idea by saying by saying this phrase. The one who's called up is telling the tibur that the parsha that that being read is not only for him as an individual, but it's for the entire tibur. He's inviting the tibur when he says baruch Hashem baruch to to for them to participate with himself in in this in this um parsha or whatever or whatever portion is that he's reading. So that's that's Barhu in a nutshell. Um question. Let me see the chat. Um Shay, you want to ask your question out loud because I'm not sure I, I totally understand. Um there isn't there a concept of if we have a bad day of tefillah, I guess. Um but the rest of the community has good good tefillah. Our our tefillah is good. So yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the source for that is, but I that is the idea that I feel like I've heard in school um, or somewhere. Um, so yeah, I think so. So I think, and I think yes. Yeah, so what's your question? So would that be if only the chazan has a good tefillah, and the okay. and the rest has a bad tefillah, I guess. I I think we're I think we're all tibor, you know, we we all count together, so. Okay. I I feel like it would it would uh it would help the tibor out. I think so. What do you think? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I I did hear idea once that all. This is my friend told me once that all all your tefillahs that you do, all your sworn asteroids that you could have, like let's say you have, uh, you go you you have a terrible week of davening and you have no kavana for a week. So you, whatever it's shvach. Um, and then and then the, the next day, you something hits right, something inspires you, and you have an amazing feel. You've lost kavana. You feel like you're really dominating. So the idea was, like you mentioned to me, I don't I don't remember exactly what his source was, but he said that all your all your bad feelers, your shvach ones, they get swooped up along with uh along with your good feel, good feel, and it all goes up together at once. So maybe it's the same idea of when we're talking about a keyboard that. You know, all the all the guys who don't have kavana get swooped up along with with the people who are having kavana. Maybe I don't know. I don't have I don't have the source for that, but it is a, a cute idea, nice idea. Okay, so now we'll start to discuss um, the beer for creation. Unless anyone has anything else to say. Okay, good. So now let's now let's talk about that. So Chazal they instituted three brachos. In relation to the Kriya Shema. So there's two before and one after. So the two before are Avarava and Yoteror. And MSB and plus Yula, the right that depending on how you call it, is the bracha that we say after Shema. And again, if you if you put in the sort of outline that we have as we're going to the base to make us, or again we're standing right now, said Barhu, we've entered the Heichal. And so there's the kalim there that represent that are represented by the different uh tefillahs. So the shulchan represents the material side of Kali Yisrael, and that's going to be the first bracha which we're going to talk about. Um, the menorah is going to be the, the spiritual side, and then after after Shema, it's the mitzvah Torah, which represents Kabbalah's Olam So we'll start with we'll start with the first bracha. We're not going to even get through the whole thing, so if you forgot it, don't worry. We'll repeat this. Uh, so the first bracha is Birchos Yotzer Or. Represents the Shochan, the the revelation of Kadosh Baruch in the material universe. The source for Birchos Yot, the Bracha of Yotir Or, it also comes to Gemara and Brachos. And the Maral has an idea that through mentioning and thinking about the miracles of creations, which we're going to speak about in the Torah, that's going to increase our Amun and Hashem. And we're going to be able to accept the yoke of Hashem. 
Um, and that's what we do when we say Shema. So we say, it's all preparation to say Shema. That's, that's the idea. So the bracha starts, bracha, like any, any bracha, bracha, Hashem, right? And he says, Yoter or Vari He forms light. We're talking about God. He forms light and creates darkness. This bracha, right, we're saying in the morning. So we mentioned light before darkness. Yoter or, he forms light. Vari Choshech creates darkness. And, and although at creation, the opposite was true, right? That we say, so, but nevertheless, we're in the morning right now, so we say morning first. It's interesting that Amar, if we switch it, we say, he rolls away light in the face of darkness. And then we say, and rolls away darkness in the face in the face of light. So because we're in the morning, we mention it first. Now there's an interesting Gemara um, in Brachos also, so that comes along with this passage that, that the Gemara says there's an idea, lahat here, midas yom balayla, umidas laila bayom, that we should make reference to daytime at night and to the nighttime by day. So that was an interesting idea, which I, which I read in Rosh and I was like, okay, good, but why? What is, what is, so what? Like, why, why should we have to reference daytime at night? So I saw a few answers, and the third answer is very nice, but we have to get there first two answers. First is Kedusha Agados. He says that because he says they the explain it there. One time there was a guy who thought that the creator of light was not the same person who created the darkness. So we're saying, okay, we, have, we should mention them both, right? The person who has who put light in in this world also puts darkness, just to represent God. God um, that, that there's only God, right? Hashem Echad. Okay. Another idea, Ben Yehoyada. He says that that the Earth is a globe. And if you think about it, if it's light in one place, it's going to be dark in another place. So that's why we have to make sure to mention light and dark, darkness, right? We ask your meaning, yom balayla, right? Laila yom, because one place it's here, one, one place it's this thing, one place it's another thing. And the last answer, which is a nice answer, which I even, I think I wanted to say before I even had a source to this, but he, but the Ben Yehoyada, he gets the second answer. He says it much nicer than I could have said it. I'll read to you in Hebrew and translate. He says, or Romi Latova He says that because light hints to good, the Hoshek and the darkness hints to the opposite. Okay. Lachain Maskir Midas Yom Balaila. This is why we mentioned the idea of day and night. Lirmos to hint to Im Omid Adam be Yisurin Shanim Shalim Lachoshek. Laila, al yifyashish min harachamim. To him too, the person is having challenges in his life, which are which are represented by the darkness of night. We shouldn't give up, right? You shouldn't give up for mercy. Ela yikavel midas yom shu atov. You should hope for midas yom with for the day, which is good. The chay midas, right? That that every time you're in night, every time you're in this. Right, figurative night. You're in the start time of challenge, time of darkness. You should hope for day. You should mention the day because it's going to come. And so too the opposite way. The chay midas laila bayom imo me betova shu midas yom. Let's say you're saying everything's good, right? Everything's good for me right now. Ah yiska v'yiv. Oh, don't don't get arrogant. Don't get haughty. Ali score she yavolo midas laila shu chosha. Because you know that you know it's going to come around. That that uh, there's going to be times where it's a little bit harder. Don't don't get arrogant. Don't get don't get haughty because of this. There's a time there, it's it's yom, but it's also going to be lila, and that's why you should mention the yom in the lila. That's his idea. Okay, and then he continues. Ose shal The breath continues that God makes peace. Vores and creates everything. He he makes he makes the two right. He makes light and darkness harmonize, and he creates the totality of the universe. So. There's an interesting Medrash which, which says that Rishayim Hashuvim Kimitim, that wicked people are considered dead people. How come? So Medrash says, because they see the sun rise and set, and they don't bless God for creating the cycle. This idea that Rishayim are considered dead because they fail to see a Kaddish Baruch Hu, the living God, right, doing his working, right, when they go to bed while it's dark and, and when they Wake up to the light of the sun. They don't realize that 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 God is doing anything. And that's why they're called Rishon. 
they're called wicked people. You think that this is this doesn't this these people don't deserve okay, I mean maybe they should recognize God is in this world, God is in this world, right? But just because they don't okay, they're there, they see that the normal day is happening, they should be called wicked. And the measure says, Yeah, those people are wicked. In contrast, Ben Israel, they recognize Kadesh Barku is the cause of light and darkness. And that's what the Pasuk says, Ve'atem ha'vekim ha'shem chayim kochem ayom. Those who cling to God, meaning those who recognize the miracle of sunrise and set, what are they called? They're called chayim. They're called alive. The idea is despite the fact that we know exactly every day, you know, we, you, can, you can look up on a manim, you can know exactly when the sunrise is going to happen, when sunset is going to happen. Nevertheless, it's a, we have to we acknowledge that it's miraculous, and so we say every single day enthusiastically. We say Yoter Arvori Hoshech, and it's also interesting that the words at the beginning of this bracha they come from Yeshayahu, and the pasuk says, right, listen carefully, Yoter Arvori Hoshech, Ose Shalom. This all sounds good, sounds very familiar, and the pasuk says Uvore Ra, and he creates evil. Okay, there's something different there, so. The 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 way the way the the way people explain it is that Chazal didn't want to say Bore Ra, so they changed it to Bore Sakol. Bore Sakol includes Ra, and you want to be more positive. Um, also, also it's um, it's related to the idea that Bore Bore Hosha, um, that God God um, needed to we go back to right that Yoter Bore Hosha. It's the idea that God needed to create darkness. The meaning of the bracha is God is Yoter or He forms light. He creates this, whatever these various forms of light for us to see. Vera Hoshech, um, and He also created darkness for the light to be perceived in. You can't recognize the light unless there's also something called darkness, or else everything is just the same. It's only light when there's darkness. Oseh Shem and He makes He makes harmony between the two, so that there's there's light and there's darkness and they exist. But a Kaddish Baruch we still separating their functions, and that's so we say by Abdel Kim Beina or Beina Hosha. God separated between the light and the day. And with the rest of the bracha, we we're going to thank a Kaddish Baruch for giving light to the earth, without which life as we know it would not would not be possible. So the bracha continues. Hameir laart the dream of the He makes shine shine upon the earth, and for those who live upon it with mercy, and the fact that God is. The fact that, that God is lighting up the earth is described as coming from Rasha, I mean, God's, God's meat of mercy. And, and it, maybe it sort of relates to the idea that, that unless, think about it, this, unless the sun is in the exact, in the exact place, um, life, life would not be possible. If it, was any, if it was any closer, everything would, would, uh, would burn. Yeah, everything would overheat. If it was any farther, everything would freeze. And that, that relates to the, the idea of and in his goodness, he constantly renews every day the acts of creation. Um, Uvtuvo is a reference to the to Tov mentioned during creation, Vayar Elohim Kitov. The entire creation is an act of Tov by Kadesh Barhu. And if you look at the words, what's it saying? Every single day is like a it's like a new creation by God. He constantly is, is creating this idea that unless that that um God God is actively running this world, and unless and once God stops that, if God would stop stop running this world, it would cease to exist. It's a constant creation. It's not something which which God created and left. It's um you know it's as opposed as opposed to humans who create something and then they're separate from their creation. God is running, running the creation for for eternity. Um, then he continues, Marabu Masach Hashem, Kulam Bechach Masisa. How manifest are your works, Hashem? You have made them with all your wisdom. Um, so this this when I when I say this this line every single day, um, I I have a good friend who who he when when he goes goes on a hike, he likes to go on hikes, he likes to see nature. Everything he sees, uh, something which he which uh, overwhelms him, um, he, he shouts out this line. He says, how, how manifest are your creations, Hashem? They, I mean, you, made, all, you made them all with your wisdom. The entire world is filled with your possessions. So Kenyan here is, tr- is translated as possessions, but 
there's also the idea that that Kenya Kenyan means a means a purchase, and so excuse me, just as there are many different proofs of, of possession, you know, uh, you could of, of a kidney, there are different ways to, to acquire something. You could do harba, you could raise it, you could do mishicha, you could pull it. So we're saying that we could also say that, that this means that the world is filled with proofs of God's possession. And someone, someone with the muna, some here at the Shem, you'll look at the you look at the world and realize that there are all these signs of God of God's ownership uh, of the world. And then Okay, and then uh, and then uh, we say Hamelach Hamromam Levado Meyaz Hamishuach Ram Farvi Yamitnas say Most Alam. We say the the King who is exalted in solitude before creation, who is praised, glorified, and elevated since days of old. Uh, this apparently is a reference to the Kabbalistic idea of the four worlds of creation, which we will not get into, as it is definitely above my pay grade. We we request and then then the Tfila says we request. We we kind of change, you know, we mention all this idea about God and then we shift tones and we say, request from God, eternal God, with your abundant compassion, be compassion it to us, removing our focus to our world. And at this time, right, which is the time of sunrise and morning, which is, you know, we this is a manifestation of the Midas Rachamim that with with God's compassion, he showed us by allowing us to wake up and live another day, back in Rachim Aleinu, have mercy on us during our entire life. Adon Uzeinu, we're giving, we're, these next next following phrases are are all titles to God. Adon Uzeinu, Lord, for who strengthens us. Storm Miskabeinu, rock of our stronghold. Magini Shainu, shield of our of our salvation. Miskab Badeinu, our power of strength. The, the, the city of Adra, um, explain that these these four titles represent four stages of a person's life during which we need a Kaddish Baruch. The first stage is Adon Uzenu, meaning uh, infancy. You say that refers to infancy. Unlike animals, human beings, we know they're born totally helpless and a young child is very vulnerable. And the idea is that one who, survive, who survives this, this stage of life is only because the Kaddish Baruch has given us the O's, the uh, the the strength, the resistance against uh, to resist the overwhelming forces which could destroy uh, a human life in infancy. Stormis Gabenu, the next phrase is a reference to childhood. It says consider a girl. And we're praising Karish Barfu as the rock upon which our tower of strength or Stormis Gabenu, meaning our physical bodies have developed and so that we can become full, mature people. My gaini shenu is adulthood. Karish Baruch Hu here serves as the shield, which says us. Magi Nishin means, means the shield of our salvation. And this is the idea that in the Zilpah, we may not even be aware of the dangers which he has shielded us during this period of our life. But nevertheless, he's our Magi, he's our, he's our shield. And then Miskav Badenu, our tower of strength, this, this reference is, this refers to the old age, that God is our stronghold, which provides us the strength to continue to live on despite despite the the uh, weaknesses of of advantage, um, and finally, just to um, so we're gonna stop here. We're gonna stop here for the for the tefillah. As, as next week, we'll get into some of the next part of Yom Teror, um, because it's, it's long thing, long and kind of shifts tones a little bit to start talking about the malachim. But I just want to close with the story that Rav Shrav, Rav Shrav mentioned as he was talking about the idea of. Mala Ars Kinyanecha, that the world is filled with your possessions as it relates to, um, and also as it relates to the ideas of, of God, of God's creation. So he said that, he said, this has happened to him. He said, I, I traveled overseas many times on these slow, conventional propeller driven airplanes, which flew at a relatively low altitude. I don't know if you could get us, I don't know if you get an airplane like that anymore. I don't, I don't know if, <laughs> I don't know if they make them anymore. Okay. But he said, that's how we used to travel. One could clearly see the ocean below, and I would make I would make the requisite breath of Ozi Masi Rashid upon seeing it. However, the first time I traveled in a jet aircraft, I was greatly impressed by the fact that the plane flew above the clouds. Imagine I am above the clouds, I thought. When it came time for Shafras, I asked for and was given a small cubicle in which I could put on my tallest and fill in and dive in privacy. During my tefillah, as I gazed down at the clouds and out. At the vastness of the clear, sun-drenched sky, I was greatly moved, as I said, 
Yoter or Vori Hoshef, Hamir the Arit, for the Darim Alebi Rachamim, Mara Buma Techa Shem, Kulam the Chokma Asisa. When I returned, he said, I told Rev Royer that never had I had such Kavana, and he saw her awareness while I was saying Mara Buma Techa Shem as I did on that flight. He listened quietly to my enthusiastic report and responded with a smile. I have the same feeling when I look at a simple daisy. Viewing the growth and structure of a simple flower that emanated from tiny seeds tell us just as clearly Marabu Masecha Hashem. So that was a, a, a fitting story and a, and a good way, a good way to close this part of Yoteror. So there are any questions?